اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم یا ایوہ الذین آمنوا لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسا ان یکونوا خیرا منهم ولا نساء من نساء عسا ان يكون خيرا منهن ولا تلمزوا انفسكم ولا تنابزوا بالالقاب بئس الاسم الفسوق بعد الايمان ومن لم يتب فاولئك هم الظالمون يا ايها الذين امنوا اجتنبوا كثيرا من الظن ان بعض الظن اثم ولا تجسسوا ولا يغتب بعضكم بعضا ايحب احدكم ان ياكل لحم اخيه ميتا فكرهتموه واتقوا الله ان الله تواب رحيم السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين دين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى We really Really We thank Allah سبحانه وتعالى For everything he has granted us We praise him We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى To bless every single one of us to bless the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us goodness in this world and the next. Brothers and sisters, firstly the reward that we achieve by coming to listen to a beautiful reminder from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is something that I cannot describe. On top of that, to be uncomfortable for a little while, for a short moment, the brothers who are seated on the floor here, mashallah, remember your reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there. And sometimes perhaps we may go home with a message that will result in great blessings in our lives. So let's clear up our intention by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are here. Nobody came here in order to be comfortable, nor did anyone come here in order to have the best of the seating. Although we tried our best, but everyone primarily is here to listen to a message. So whether you are standing, you are seated, you are a little bit squeezed, you are sweaty, so on. By the will of Allah, you will get a message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it come from the heart and pierce straight through to the heart. This evening, we are going to be having direct speech. Meaning, I will be addressing you direct. It may affect every one of us in our lives. The reason is, we all have tongues, we all have eyes. We are gifted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't even realize. Allah says, أَلَمْ نَجْعَلْ لَهُ عَيْنَيْنِ وَلِسَانَهُ وَشَفَتَيْنِ Did we not give him two eyes? Meaning, did we not give man two eyes? Did we not give him a tongue? Did we not give him lips? So he can speak with, he can see with. Subhanallah. This is a gift of Allah, such a powerful gift of Allah, that only those who do not have the ability to see would understand how great a gift it is to be able to see. And only those who do not have the ability to talk will be able to know the gift of the speech that Allah has given us. Amazing. We take it for granted, and we definitely do take it for granted, because... If you were to be given a gift and you were to know its value, you would not use it in the wrong way. We would never use the gift that we know the value of in the wrong way. But the minute we become oblivious of it, we forget for a moment, then we start using it in the wrong direction. Also, when Allah has given us our bodies, when He has given us our health, when He has given us so much 
He knows the system that He has put in place in order for us to live in the world in a beautiful way so that we will lead a happy life and arrive in the akhirah or the life after death in a way that we are happy of what we've done whilst we were alive in the short world. So if you take a careful look at your own eyes or your own lips, your tongue, you will realize that as you grow older, what happened when you were born will repeat itself. Which means when a person is born, they really cannot see very clearly initially. The doctors will confirm that when the child opens the eyes for the first time, the clarity of vision only commences slowly but surely, stage by stage, up to they get to a certain point when they, when they are able to see clearly. The same applies to our tongues. A little child does not come out of the mother's womb and say, Hi dad, I'm happy you're here. That doesn't happen. Imagine if your child came out, Assalamu alaikum. MashaAllah. We would probably look and say, Oh, is this Isa alayhi salam? May Allah protect us. Allah grant us goodness. But the point to consider, Wallahu akhrajakum min butuni ummahatikum la ta'lamuna shay'a. Remember that Allah has taken you out of the wombs of your mothers without you knowing anything. You knew nothing, nor do you remember how it was in the womb, nor do you know how it was as you came out, nor do you know, or nor did you have any knowledge as you came out. But slowly Allah says, وَجَعَلَ لَكُمُ السَّمْعَ وَالْأَبْصَارَ وَالْأَفْئِدَةِ Allah says, He gave for you. He has made for you the faculty of hearing, the faculty of seeing, and the hearts. The feelings and so on. This is all a gift of Allah. So when we are born, we come to the world without knowing how to talk. Slowly, as a year passes, we begin to start uttering certain utterances. Initially, a language that even our parents do not understand. Sometimes we say words as we are little babies. And we hear the babies say words. And you don't really know what they are saying. Very few might be able to have an idea. You know, sometimes the mother, sharp enough to have a little idea. This means my child needs this or that. But that's just an idea. As you grow older, you start learning the language of your parents. And very amazingly, if you are brought up in an Arabic society, you will not just suddenly know English. No. You don't come with a chip to say, right, what language do you want? Select it. We don't, it's not a note 3 that we're talking about. Select the language and next thing you find keyboard is different, everything else different. This is a gift of Allah where as you grow up, no matter what language is spoken around you, you pick it up. You pick it up. That's the language you pick up. And this is why they say up to the age of 12, a child can pick up even perhaps 30 languages if they are all spoken properly and completely by at least one person around them. You know, sometimes we want our children to learn the Arabic language. So we say a few words of Arabic and the child doesn't pick it up. One person must only speak Arabic, then that child will pick up Arabic. One person must only speak the native language, that child will pick up the native language. But if you have a person who speaks constantly different languages and so on, and you want the child to pick up all of them, it will be a little bit more difficult. But this is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the child opens the mouth. We all opened our mouths at a certain age. And when we said the words, Allah, our children, our parents became so happy. That look at my child. He's uttering beautiful words. He's remembering or he's saying the word of his own maker. The name of his maker. Subhanallah. This is a gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the tongue is used and as it develops by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we forget we forget that it was actually a great gift that we were able to speak. Some parents, the child is two years old, not yet talking. So they get worried. You know, my child is not speaking. Believe me, beloved father and mother, don't worry. Whether the child is one, two or three, there will come a time when they will speak so much, you will be thinking to yourself, please keep quiet. Allahu Akbar. There is no fixed age to say, this month they start talking. Nothing fixed. No, it's just a general trend. So some people delay slightly, thank Allah, even walking. Some two, three years, they're not yet walking. Don't worry. When they walk, they will walk so much that you will start thinking to yourself, there was a day I was worried. Have you ever seen adults who cannot walk? 
This is why we tell the mothers, you know, sometimes when you live together, you have your in-laws with you, you have your parents with you, you have spouse and so on, and they start picking on your child to say, look, your child is already two, they're not even walking. Look at them and say, do you see any adults who are not walking? Don't worry, they will walk. Allahu Akbar. We should not be picking on one another's children. No. Each child is unique. Gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, as the children grow up, we realize it's a gift because we know it's so beautiful for them to speak. But when we grow a little bit older, we begin to say words. What type of words do we utter? Brothers and sisters, what your parents say is what you say. What your friends say is what you say. What they teach you at the schools your parents send you, sent you to, that is what you will utter. If we utter swear words in our home, so do our children. And they will. And they will know bigger swear words. You know the generations that come, they have things which are more advanced than us. So if I was saying, may Allah protect us all, if I utter the small bad word, they will utter big bad words. Because they become more professional in whatever they are doing. So this is why as parents, you should be ashamed of yourself if you have had children and you still utter bad words. You should be ashamed. Why? Because the use of that tongue, what will happen to it? It will wag in the wrong direction. The children learnt it from who? Don't come and say, my child never swore. Do you swear? The answer is yes. Well then now you should know why your child is swearing. Took it from you? I know of non-Muslims who change their lives when they have children. At least the life was changed. With us sometimes, we don't even think of having children as a gift of Allah. Besides those who do not have children at all, trying for many years, ask them how it feels. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them with, their, with His mercy to grant them children as well. So my brothers and sisters, it is important as they grow older, they learn good words from us. Now that we are adults, what happens to our tongues? What happens to the tongue? We are now adults. So we, went, we will speak about that in a few moments. Before I get there, let's go to the eyes. The eye is one of the most important faculties. Those who lose their vision at an early age, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala restore it for them, they know the value of the eye. That some people they could see before, now the eyesight is dwindling. And Allah has kept it such, as I said, that when you grow old, your speech is blurred a little bit. So now people cannot understand you once again, just like they could not understand you when you were a child. The same happens to our eyesight. That as you grow older, what happens to your eyesight? It deteriorates. It's the plan of Allah. The use of these eyes, over. When I die, the faculty of hearing, the faculty of speech, the use of it is over for this world. Now, I have died, my body is now going to decompose into the soil and I will proceed into the afterlife and I will be given some body that is much perfect than the one I have right now in which I will live in the life after death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a beautiful resurrection and may He bless us in every single way. So, I just need to use these faculties for a few years in the way that will obey, that will be within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just a few years. So ask yourself, how many more years do these eyes have to see? Ask yourself. How old are you? Say for example, if we are on average 30 years old. On average, 25 to 30. We have another 30 to 40 years to use our eyes. That's all. After that, are you going to use your eyes? The answer is no. So just use it properly now. What about your tongue? You have a few hours in the day. Your tongue, Allah says, if you remember me, if you utter good words, you will be rewarded. You will be able to build a palace of yours in heaven. That which we spoke about yesterday, if you recall in the talk, you can build your palace in heaven solely by utterances. Did you know that? By praising Allah, by uttering good words, by reminding people to do good. Cooperate with one another in terms of goodness or in goodness and righteousness. We cooperate, we encourage each other to do good with our tongues as well. So that is building your akhirah. Why should I leave my tongue dry when I can use it right now to build my palace in the akhirah? Just by saying subhanallah. Subhanallah, all praise is due to Allah, glory be to Allah, alhamdulillah. The tongue is such, if you do not occupy it with that which is beneficial, the tables turn. 
it occupies you with that which is dangerous. If you don't use your tongue in that which is obedience, in that which is good, in that which is beneficial, it will occupy you with that which is not beneficial. So the best thing for us to do is to utter words that are good. And two types of words. Words of praise of your own maker which people do not have to hear. That's the first type of word. And the second is that which people need to hear in terms of goodness, encouragement, fulfill your duty to give your child a good upbringing by uttering good words to your child. A lot of us, we don't understand the connection between the mind and the tongue. We don't understand the connection between the eyes and the mind as well. As for the tongue and the mind, so powerful that when we utter, our utterances are first taken in by the ears and then the minds of those who hear them. So when I am communicating to you right now, your ears have taken in what I've said, your mind quickly processes it, and thereafter something happens to us deep within where we either accept what is being said or reject it, and then we react to it in a specific way. This is how beautiful the faculty of the tongue, the ears, the mind, the connection of these is something that is amazingly a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if I have a child and that child needs admonishing or needs correction of some, some form, if I am to use the best of speech, the child will process the language and the speech I have said in a way that will either result in that child doing something good or heading in the wrong direction. Why? Because of the choice of words I have had. And in order to choose your words, you also need to use your brain. You need to use your mind. So before I open my mouth, I need to think. What is it that I need to think about? I need to think firstly, what do I want to say? We all have heard the Arabic quotation, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ عَلَى الْفُؤَادِ دَلِيلًا The tongue has actually been kept as a means of displaying what exactly is in the heart. You know what's in your heart? You want to say it. It's not shown on your face, nor is it shown on your hands. But it is shown when you talk about it. This is why we always tell the married people and we tell others that, you know, when something is wrong, when you are sad for some reason, say it out in a beautiful way. Why are you sad? Do not expect people to jump to a conclusion because they will jump to wrong conclusions. Sometimes a person is frowning, you know, they're really upset, they're not talking to you, and someone is asking you, why are you so upset? And you're just quiet. Why are you so angry? And you're just quiet. Why are you so upset? Silence. Silence is never ever going to be able to solve that matter. You need to talk, you need to speak up, you, but in a beautiful way. So don't just start screaming and yelling, but think firstly. What do I want to say? I want to tell my husband that I am upset with you, for example. Why am I upset? I am upset because I have seen you flirting. Okay? So how do you word it? You don't just start screaming and yelling, but you think firstly. Allah has given me a tongue and a mind. Now instead of just wagging that tongue by saying the most dirty of words, I want to solve the problem or do I want to create a bigger problem? It should be the first. I want to solve the problem. So I need to think carefully. Look, mashallah, what a good man. But he has a weakness or he made a mistake. Let me raise the issue with him in a beautiful way. So I think firstly, how do I say it? So I can start using good words. You know, you are such a good man. Mashallah, look where we started. Now the mind starts to process what we are saying. It's not just the wagging of a tongue without the mind. The mind processes, wow, I'm being praised. You're such a good man. You've done so much for me. You're a good father. You know, mashallah, you've achieved so much in this world. Your business is also flourishing. I, mashallah, you also try to read your salah and so on. You know, there is a small thing that just hurt my heart. And I feel because you're a good man, I don't want your link with Allah to be severed because it will affect the link with all of us. So rather you build your link with Allah, you see your relation you have with the opposite sex. I think it needs to be governed in a beautiful way. My beloved husband, I really feel that you can do much better than this. Look at this message that I've seen on your phone. Wow. <laughs> wow. Why did I say this? To show you that there is a way of speaking. There is a way of using your tongue. You use your mind. 
The person who heard you will look and say, I'm sorry, I won't do it again. You are so right, my darling. Let's read two rakats of salah, inshallah. And I ask Allah to forgive me, to grant me strength. Wow, I hope we are husbands like that, mashallah. Mashallah. But you need to be a wife like that too. So, we can solve our matters if we know how to. But if you come up, what's this message? Who do you think you are? I'm never talking to you again. Or you just keep quiet and you're sleeping in the other room. And the man doesn't even know why. What's going on? So we have not even opened our mouths when we needed to. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us. Use the gift of Allah. Do not abuse it. Use the gift of Allah to solve your matters. But do not ignore the gift of Allah when you need it. When you really need it. You need to say things. You need to utter words. Imagine salah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about how important salah is in so many places in the Quran. One of the most beautiful gifts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is salah. Jazakallah khair my brother. I think it's one of the biggest acts of worship to be able to get up and move your vehicle inshallah. I think we all know where we parked our cars. If anyone knows that they've parked their car in an awkward position, get up and walk out inshallah. Uh, by the will of Allah, when you come back here, uh, perhaps you will have been elevated in status so high that you might have all your problems sorted out in the dunya. The reason is, you're going to solve a major, major problem out there for all of us. So Allah will solve your problems in your life by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, I really appreciate this. Jazakumullah khair. So, getting back to what we were saying. What Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the gifts. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us so many gifts. It's important for us to realize and recognize the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us these eyes. Has He given us the eyes in order for us to just gaze at anything and everything when we know that the power of sight is such that the mind processes what you've seen within split moments and it also has a powerful effect on your whole body. Sometimes you see something, every hair on your body can stand. Do you know that? Moments ago we spoke about how when you speak properly, it affects the whole body. When someone swears you, a huge swear word, and you, are, you think you're a big man or a very important woman, for example, and suddenly you have a huge swear word come in your direction in public, what happens? Immediately your body heat increases, you become upset and angry, and you want to retaliate. Why? Because you heard something that was uttered by a tongue that you did not like. So let's not be fooled by thinking that the tongue does not have an impact on a person. The most powerful impact by the tongue and the eyes. When you see a gruesome incident, you won't sleep for so many nights. Am I right? If you have witnessed a murder, may Allah protect us all and may He safeguard this beautiful country and its people and may He safeguard the globe at large. But if anyone has witnessed something gruesome, they will be having nightmares for a long time to come. Why? Because they saw something, even if it was for one second. Now people tell you, why must I lower my gaze? Because your eyes are so powerful that within a split second, they process what you've seen and they leave a mark on your hard drive. No matter how much you have formatted it, there is software that will retrieve that encrypted image back again and again. It will either haunt you or it will result in your benefit. Amazing. So a lot of youngsters say, look, mashallah, they're beautiful girls for us to see. So let's just go out and have a nice peep, you know. My brothers, you don't understand science to start with. Forget about science. Islam and the Quran come far above that. The explanation when Allah says, just lower your gaze. It's better for you, better for your iman, better for your future, better for your marriage, better for everything else. And we think we can compete with the maker, but we don't realize you just need to have thought for a small moment that my eyes, in actual fact, play such a big role that within a split second, something happens to my body. An image gets encrypted at the back of my brain. And then I cannot sleep sometimes. Either because it was something bad I saw, or something unreachable in a permissible way. Do you know what that means? You see something, oh, mashallah, look at those legs. I'm just giving an example. 
And after that, you know you can't get it, you won't get it. So now what happens? You start interfering. Next thing, you're in jail. Why? For harassment. Yes. Why were you in jail? You should have just looked down and said, Astaghfirullah. Story over. My jail sentence, 10 years or whatever it was, gone. Why? Because I looked down. It's over, gone. But now you can't sleep. You go back home, you do not appreciate what you have. Why? Your mind has processed something that it thinks is far better in quality, yet you don't know you have something which is far better within your own reach that belongs to you. And you don't want to appreciate it, not because it's bad, but because you did not understand the power of the eyes. That's why. This is why today, and obviously I'm just moving a little bit further, we had an announcement that knocked us out a little bit, but inshallah we've caught up again. My brothers and sisters, we are in the age of pornography. We are living at the peak of the pornographic age. This issue of hypersexuality, I've mentioned it the last time I came to Sri Lanka. I'm mentioning it again. Especially amongst the young generation growing up, even some of the adults. The accessibility to all this is such that we don't realize with the damage that is being caused. The minute you see something, it has an encryption at the back of your mind that will last up to the day you die and beyond. So protect yourself from it. Safeguard your eyes. It's the gift of Allah. You don't understand the powerful message that Allah has delivered your maker when he tells you, Tell the believing males to lower their gazes and to protect their private parts. Because Allah knows that is the best for you. That is the most pure for you. Protect yourself. Fight yourself to save your eyes from looking at something that is processed in a way that your whole body feels it. And wallahi, it happens. I've spoken to a few of the youngsters. Mashallah, there are some who come up and they need help. And they tell you, do you know what? We've been involved in this bad habit. And we really have, are trying our best to come out of it. I can tell you something very quickly. Because some might say, you know what? We have this bad habit. How do we get out of it? Number one, you need to ask Allah's forgiveness. Sincerely. Number two, you need to increase your good deeds because it's like a seesaw. When you have more good deeds, you have less time for bad deeds. When you use your time and occupy yourself in that which is beneficial, then you will protect yourself from that which is futile, let alone that which is sinful. So you need to know, if I am bored and if I sit with the bad company, I am going to do whatever shaitan puts in my mind. But if I am occupied, I go for my salah, I have company that talks about, even if it is about education and your books and so on, believe me, it's better than going into that which is dirty. And so you increase your good deeds, you ask Allah's forgiveness, but you need a lot of willpower in order to fight yourself whenever you want to do that which is bad, bearing in mind that your reward is with Allah. And you will see the fruits of it in this world as well. Just like we see the rotten fruit of the rotten tree that happens to grow after we do something that is rotten. You do something rotten, a rotten tree happens to grow with rotten fruit. And every time the fruit comes and we say, what's wrong with this? But you don't know the seed you sowed was very, very rotten. We ask Allah to forgive us. In Islam, something beautiful. You have a rotten tree and you want to sort it out, you just need to sit and ask Allah for forgiveness and He sorts your tree out. Amazing. What a gift of Allah. How beautiful. So no matter what you've done in the past, today we say quit. It's over. It's gone. The power of the eyes, and I've mentioned this so many times and I'm going to repeat it this evening a few times. If you were to look at me, your mind will process what I'm saying. My actions, perhaps so much else. And it's processed in a way that it will either last within your system for X amount of time, longer or shorter. Depending on how serious you were as well and how perhaps I delivered the message. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to deliver a positive message. And we know this. The same applies if we were to walk out and we were to go to a beauty contest for example automatically something happens to you. Do you know, as Muslims, what we believe? You will go out and appreciate that which does not belong to you, that which you are not going to get to. Say, for example, these are non-mahram, and I am watching them parade in front of me in the height of their beauty. Within a split second, your wife back at home has lost value. 
Lost value. And one might say, no, come on, they have lost value. It's over. Even if it means by 0.5% value lost. Why? Because you are watching something, your eyes have taken it in. The most powerful megapixel ever. You have seen the detail complete more than these mobile phones you have. And you have actually witnessed it. Your mind has processed it such. And you have wished for something that will never get to you until you get to paradise when you might get something better had you not looked at it that way. Amazing. Amazing. So this is why people try to lie to themselves that there's nothing wrong. Islam says to the woman, cover yourself. Why? Because Islam wants to protect you and all the men of the globe. And now comes the rest of the dunya and they say, it's not important, do as you wish. No problem. People may be free in a lot of the world to do as they wish, to dress as they wish. But they will become enslaved by the problems they will have as a result. That's what we are saying. So we say, freedom, dress as you want. But you will not be free when the problem of that particular dress overtakes you. Then you are a slave of it. So now, divorce has increased. Why? Because all these problems are interlinked. We do not appreciate our spouses. We no longer look for marriage material. But we look for that which the eye has processed without the mind. You know, one might argue, no ways. How can my wife lose value when I've seen all these beautiful girls? Well, the reality is... You can say what you want. We can say what we want too. Allahu Akbar. You can say what you want. We can say what we want too. I'm a marriage counselor. Believe me, we have come across hundreds of problems where the men will admit to you, you know what, my wife is no longer attractive. That means you are attracted to external beauty. And if that's the case, do you think you are attractive to your wife? Allahu Akbar. That's a question also. There comes a time when she might look at you and say, "Ah, no more. Who am I going for? I don't even want to say names, but someone else. May Allah protect us. And then we get someone who is a bombshell, really. When I say bombshell, you know they use that word to describe the height of beauty. It's not a mistake. Bomb and shell, those together create a real disaster. It's not a mistake. So this is why we say, you left your spouse or... You might have turned to adultery in order to get elsewhere. That too, Allah's plan is such that the outer beauty only lasts for a few years. After that, it goes away. It fades. Even you can't see properly. Amazing. You can't see properly anymore. But if you were in love with the dedication, the sacrifice, the goodness, the character, the deen of the individual, it can only grow and become better. This is why I call on you. All of us, myself included, look at your spouses, look at your parents, look at your siblings and tell yourself, ask yourself, how much are they doing for me? How much are they sacrificing? Look at what they are doing. Fall in love with that. You will have the happiest of lives. Fall in love with the sacrifice that your family is making for you and you will understand who comes first and who comes next. Sometimes our parents die for us, which means they work morning to evening to send us to college. And to send us to the top universities. We go to those universities. Neither do we control our ears, nor tongues, nor eyes. And when we come out of the university, dad is biggest enemy. But he has just spent 20,000 US dollars a year for the last four years on me. And he worked from 8 to 5 every day on me. But because I did not know how to process or how to use my eyesight and my tongue and my ears. Now he's my enemy because he's telling me, no, please, you are making a big mistake. Don't marry this person. It happens. Who was the fool? The reality is today, people like myself have to come in the middle and we have to go and convince dad. Because convincing the young man or the young woman, we today stand almost nil chance. Almost nil. Try and talk to them. Look, you can't. What are you talking about? I'll go to someone else. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. Many people have regretted the decisions they've made against their own parents. But... I would like to address parents as well. Sometimes we are foolish. There's nothing wrong in them getting married. And we still have an objection. Why? Because of our pride. That's it. Nothing wrong. My pride. Maybe this person comes from a different part of the country. Maybe they have a slightly different background. Big deal. Allahu Akbar. Did Allah allow you to reject or to refuse? If the answer is no, you are wrong my parent. You are wrong. Remember this. So we've spoken on both sides. 
as much as we have encouraged the children to make the correct decisions, it is important for the parents also to facilitate and create ease. We are in an age of technology where the, some of the older parents do not even know how the mobile phone is being used in order to reach so many different people. We used to talk about the wagging of tongues. Today it's the pressing of the keyboard on the phone does something similar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us protection. And may He open our doors. So my brothers and sisters, remember, the way we look at things, the way we process things, plays a very big role in the type of life we will lead and we will live. So let us all promise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we will try our best to look at that, which Allah has permitted us to look at. And we will try our best to hear that which Allah has allowed us to listen to. Do you know, they say, well, you can listen to this, these lyrics, there's nothing wrong with it. To be honest, what we are taught as Muslimin, and obviously here, we are speaking to a free world, so you can either choose to follow or you can choose not to follow. The result and the consequence, that will be up to you. May Allah protect us. But the message we deliver is the Islamic message. People say, don't worry, you can listen to all these lyrics, so what, it's, what a big deal. No, sometimes when you hear things, it impacts on you. Like I said, someone swears you, you have such a big impact that you get angry, you get hot, you start sweating. Just because someone is swearing you, they are saying something, your mind is processing it. The same applies, when we say dirty words, my brothers and sisters, when we utter dirty words, and we listen to dirty words, the mind processes them. We become people who are dirty. We become people who are affected by it. We think everyone else is dirty. Sometimes people sit and listen to that which is extremely dirty in terms of music. And when they get up, they get up and they start walking with a bounce. They look at the other people with a totally different eye. They don't realize that their minds have been changed completely. They don't realize that the way they are walking, the way they are looking has been changed totally. But it will take them a lifetime to realize by that time it may be too late. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, protect your ears, protect your eyes, protect your tongue. And sometimes we don't realize the value of the statements of our own maker. So my brothers and sisters, remember, pornography is such that when we get onto it, the mind processes it in such a way that it asks for more. And when it asks for more and it is available, we will do it hook or crook. No matter how we get hold of it, we will get hold of it. And we are back in it. And when we hooked on it, we then do not appreciate those around us. We start developing all sorts of bad habits, all sorts of weird things we start doing. We look at people, we get angry, we have a temper. Why? Brother, you're hooked on to pornography. We need to stop it, really. And we need to ask Allah's forgiveness. And we need to start doing good things. You know, when, uh, when I was much younger, I went to Makkah to Al-Mukarramah. And someone told me, you know, just keep on looking at this Kaaba. Because it's a very, very big reward to look at it. So, later on we learned that, okay, it may not be from the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa But the idea of the statement was that, if I close my eyes and I can picture the Kaaba, for example, it's far better than a person who closes their eyes and pictures something dirty. May Allah protect us. Do you know, if I look at the light for a split second, and then I, fla I blink my eyes, I can keep on seeing the light even though I'm looking in the other direction. Have you noticed that? Why? It's the power of the eye. So if you have looked at something, it remains within. One might be able to explain it through the issue of focus and the issue of bright light and so on. Sometimes it happens even with that which is not extremely bright in shining and so on. So protect your eyes because do not be fooled by thinking that, no, nothing wrong, I'll just see today and see what's going on. My friends are just looking and you know, it's okay. Your mind processes it. Then when your friends are not there, you become a person who hunts for it on your own because... Your mind is asking your whole body to go back to it. It's all started with your eyes. And this is why, when you have not seen all the beautification of the non-mahram women, you won't want to work towards it, because you don't even know. You appreciate your spouse alone, because that is the only thing you know, the only person you know in that particular beauty or in that particular clothing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us protect our gaze.
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. We are living in an age where I believe that to protect the gaze is one of the biggest acts of worship. We are living in an age where I believe that a lot of us would actually need a lot of discipline just in order to look down. And I challenge you for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when you see things that are wrong, just look down and say, Ya Allah, I did that for you. See how you feel. You will get a coolness, a calmness in your heart. You will learn to appreciate what you have. The day you get married, mashallah, you'll be so happy because, mashallah, you embrace your spouse, you experience. You express your love for them. You tell them how beautiful they are. How many of us who are married here have sat with our spouses and just admired them and told them how beautiful they look. A lot of us would probably be thinking, but you know what, I've seen more beautiful than this. (laughs) Astaghfirullah. Astaghfirullah. So who is going to tell them that they are beautiful? May Allah make it such that we understand the act of worship it is. To admire your spouse. It's a sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today people want to revive every other sunnah. But they don't realize they haven't yet sat in front of their spouses and started saying words of how beautiful they are. How good looking they are. How lovely they sound and so on. My beloved sisters, we need to do that too to our own husbands. Alhamdulillah. You know it's two way traffic, mashallah. I know a lot of the roads in this beautiful city of Colombo becoming one way. But by the will of Allah, there is another road, the other side, going the other way. Isn't it? So, the same way we want our spouses to praise us, we should also praise them. Sit and actually declare these words. Say them beautifully. Recite them to them. See how happily you will live. Look, today we are sitting in an Islamic lecture. A lecture connected to the religion of Islam. And look at the points we are learning. How to live my life in such a beautiful way. The rules and regulations of my maker are not there in order to make my life tough, but in order to just facilitate the ease of the few years that I'm going to be in this world so I can live so happily, appreciate the few things that I've had and look forward to the meeting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rather than just delete religion from the equation, live a life full of misery because I will never get what I want today, look at the number of cases of sexual harassment. Top people, top people. And you find sexual harassment of this, rape of that, this of that. Why? Because if they were people who lowered their gaze, that would not have happened. That would not have happened. And you know, today we live in a free world, so you cannot tell the women, hey, when you're walking on the street and you see all other women and so on, it's, it's sometimes it's a free world where they have the choice to dress how they want. But at the same time, there is something called a provocation. It is their duty also not to provoke. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant the justice system on the globe the balance. To understand that at the same time we need people not to provoke the other to do something bad. Although we will never justify that which is bad. That's a balanced word. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. It's important for us to know that to be able to look down when things are glaring you in the face is far greater act of worship, is a far greater act of worship than a person who looked down when there was nothing really to look down from. I once met a friend of mine from one of the Muslim countries where they are very strict in terms of dress. So when he visited me, I was in South Africa in Cape Town, and he told me, you people are much more pious than us. And I am thinking, how is he gauging piety? Because piety is something in the heart, only Allah knows, you know. He says, you know, you people live with sin that is so accessible to you, but you still stay away from it. We live in a country where sin is not accessible, and still our people go and access it. Imagine the difference. So when we are living in a country that we are in a minority, say a non-Muslim country, sin is accessible. It's easy to log on to pornography. It's easy to go and find a girlfriend and do this and go and book in that place and find this woman or that man and do whatever you like. It's very easy. What stops you? The only thing that will stop you is the fear of Allah by the will of Allah. By the will of Allah. So it's accessible and still you are not doing it. That is a far greater sign of piety than a person who wants to do it, but it's not accessible to him. Far greater sign. For example, you try to log on to a pornographic site and the server tells you this site has been been blocked. And you say, oh no. But you don't realize, you should say, alhamdulillah. 
People get angry. Why is this country? This country lacks freedom. Why? Because it's blocking all these pornographic sites and so on. They did you a favor, my brother. They did you a favor, my beloved sister. Allahu Akbar. But we don't realize. So, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us. Now getting to the tongue. There is a whole different department of discussion when it comes to the tongue. And that is, to utter words that are upright, a duty of a Muslim. Therefore, any word that you say that is not upright, you are responsible for it and you will pay for it. It will return to visit you at some stage in this world and then in the next. So if I say a good word, the good word will come back to me. In terms of goodness. And if I say a bad word, the bad word will come back to me with evil. This is the system of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your action has a reaction. Definitely. You do good, you get good in return. You do bad, bad comes back. May Allah protect us. There is a way out of it, like we always say, to repent, to ask for forgiveness. It's a quick door out, mashallah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us. Today we are so worried about the lives of others that we forget to lead our own lives. You know, we have a powerful man who passed away yesterday, Nelson Mandela. And mashallah, he has served humanity in a very, very big way. He will definitely be missed. We are definitely saddened by that loss. And at the same time, we have so much to learn from him. And we do believe that he has contributed towards not only the Muslims, but humanity at large in his fight against so many evils. But at the same time, there is no point in debating where he has gone now, because wherever he has gone now, I don't own it, it's Allah who owns it, so let Allah be the judge. We will never utter words that will be blasphemous against Allah. He is the owner of the Akhirah. Whatever will happen to that man, it's up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the meantime, the debate that we have amongst us as to where he has gone has become so hot that we are forgetting where we are going. You see what we are saying? Why debate? Why don't you just look at the good that was done and benefit from it? The rest, forget about it. You don't have to declare where the man is gone because you don't know. Allah has not given the keys of the Akhirah to me or to you. And you don't know the precise condition upon which any individual has died. The dying moments are the crucial moments which you were not a witness of. So you cannot claim to be a knower of the unseen. So the best thing for you to do, worry about your own life. Take a good page from his. Look at how he served. How have you served? Look at what he did. What did you do? Amazing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. The reason I raise this, we mess our tongues by talking about this one and that one, swearing one another because one says he is here, the other one says he is there, that one says this, and we are fighting each other, not realizing in the process I am losing my own paradise. I am losing my own happiness. My brothers and sisters, the issue of backbiting is something dangerous. We talk about others bad behind their backs in such a way that if they were present, they would feel very hurt. In that case, Allah says, you have taken the sin on your own shoulders. You have eaten the flesh of your dead brother. You know, if I were to tell you that that restaurant down there, it serves meat of the dead goats that have died. How many of us would go there to eat? None of us. Why? It's a dead goat. What about dead human beings? What about dead human beings? The Quran says, and I read these verses, Would you like it for any one of you to be eating the flesh of your dead brother and so you detested it? Anyone wanting to do that? Nobody. So why do we need to talk bad about someone behind their backs? For what reason? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. The argument that people have is, no, I'm just telling the truth. 
Well, the hadith explains that when you speak the truth about someone behind their backs, that is not a good word, but it is true, then that is called backbiting. And if it is a lie, then it is slander. I think all of us, the speaker included, need to do more to protect ourselves from backbiting. And I'm just being plainly honest. All of us, myself included, need to do more to protect ourselves from speaking about others behind their backs in a way that if they were present, they would not like it at all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. It is one of the biggest scourges of this age. And the problem is, it comes back to visit us. So the man has a problem in his house. The man has a loss in his business. The man has something. The woman has no happiness. The woman has, for example, turmoil in her own marriage. She has this. That is because she spoke about someone else's marriage. That is because she started messing with this person. That is because he was backbiting about this one. That is because he messed his tongue about that one. Let's go on to speak about slander. Slander is the biggest issue ever that you could have against fellow human beings. To slander, imagine I just spoke about you without knowing you. I have never met you, for example. And I start saying this man has had an affair with that woman. On what grounds am I saying that? I might have seen, for example, two people walking together. You saw a man and a woman together. And you started deducing that these people are having an affair. Is it because you have a dirty mind yourself? Is it because if you were in that position, you would have seized the opportunity to have an affair? Is that the reason? So because we have a dirty mind, we think dirty of others. And this is why that statement comes back to haunt us and our children and family members. But we don't realize. Like I said, when you look at something, the process of it affects you for the rest of your life. The mind processes it. The same applies. You've uttered a word. Believe me, the result of that utterance will last up to the life after death. It will come back to you in the form of something. And it will say, I am the utterance that you spoke. I am the word you said. I am here to visit you. May Allah protect us. It's not worth it at all. Lead your life. That's what Islam teaches us. Don't lead the lives of others. They have their own lives to lead. You want to manage the lives of others when we haven't even managed our own lives. So my brothers and sisters, cut out the speech about other people. Nobody's having affairs that bother us. No. Nobody's doing things that should be bothering us. If you want to advise them, advise them in a polite way, in a direct way. I've already been through the type of words we should be using with even the people we would like to advise. You see a young man walking out of a nightclub, for example. And you happen to be passing and you look at him and you know he's the son of your own friend. You look at him and say, my son, don't worry, I'm not going to tell your dad. We started off that way, okay? But the the point I want to raise, I want to advise him. But I started off telling him, don't worry, son, I'm not going to tell your dad. But you know what, son, this is very, very serious because I care for you as the son of my friend so much that... I know how dangerous this life is. Please don't go there again. It's something really, really dangerous. It will result in this and that and so on. And you speak to him for half an hour and say, You know what, son? We'll go out for some coffee tomorrow. We'll have a a bit of a chat. What will happen? He respects you because you protected his dignity. You protected his dignity. Today, you see someone's son walking out of the nightclub. As he takes one step out, Facebook has it across the globe with a photo. Photograph, Instagram, no even statement, subhanallah, just the photograph and it's all out there. So what will happen? It gets to him after a while. He hates you, you dislike him, you caused a split that was your friend's child, your friend becomes upset, he might even tell you, listen, why didn't you tell me? I could have dealt with it. We have become people who have stopped caring for one another. That is why the ummah is not progressing. If you care for one another, you would want to solve the problem in a beautiful way. If you cannot solve the problem with your own mouth in terms of direct speech with the people involved in a beautiful way, at least make dua for the person behind the scenes. So now you saw the brother, but you didn't know him maybe. You saw a sister, and you didn't know her maybe, and she was doing something that was unacceptable, and you didn't know how to communicate. So what you did, you went home, and you started praying to Allah, Ya Allah, guide this person. Ya Allah, open their doors and open mine as well. Ya Allah, they are your worshippers. They might have so many good deeds. This one bad deed, Ya Allah, protect them, safeguard them, you know, grant them cover, protect them, so that they are not exposed in a way that subhanallah, 
they please you and protect me, my children. Remember this. We all want goodness for ourselves, our families, our parents, our brothers and sisters, our children, our uncles and aunts, for example. We want goodness, but we don't want goodness for the children of others. We don't want goodness for others' families. We don't want goodness for so many others. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us and grant us ease. Please memorize your number plate so that when we say a number, you can get up and we will be so proud of you. You know, if I had a gift right now, I would give a gift to those whose number plates these were. Because the amount of courage that is required to get up in the midst of people who are seated like this, in order to move your vehicle with everyone giving you dirty looks, I am prepared to give you a prize. I am really prepared to give you a prize by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my brothers and sisters, it's not like we don't like you, that's why we're we're saying these number plates. No. We actually love you so much that the day your emergency happens, you will not have a hindrance. Inshallah, you will drive straight through. Like we said, do a good deed, it comes to visit you. Move your car, others will move their cars for you, inshallah. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, my brothers and sisters, let's get back to what we were saying. The same applies, you know, people think that, okay, the Sharia has asked us not to speak with our tongues about others. But if I message it, it's okay. (laughs) That is wrong. The messaging has the same ruling as the use of the tongue, because the message has got across what was in the heart. Remember moments ago I said your tongue is there in order to express what is in the heart. So if you have expressed it through a message, it is the same thing. And you know how dangerous a message is? When you've said something, it might find its way to a few places and then it might die down, maybe. But when you've sent a message, it lasts longer. Because nowadays WhatsApp, you can have 50 people in a group. BBM, you can have so many in a group. One message sent to a group, by the time one minute has passed already, 500,000 people have seen what's going on. And who uttered the word? One person. The damage, the sin, the detriment that will return to that person and anyone else who has forwarded that message is such that sometimes I sit back and think maybe that's the reason why a lot of us are suffering. Sometimes I sit back and when I get these messages about other people and how bad they are, People are not worth being spoken about. Speak about yourself. The only time people are worth being spoken about is when they are doing good deeds. That's the time they are worth being spoken about. But for someone to say, this man is a dog, that man is a monkey, this man, they will never be dogs and they will never be monkeys. Because the person who said it is blind. They can't see. And if they think you're a dog, then they have to be dogs because they are the same species. They haven't understood that. So this is why to utter these dirty words, they come back to pay, meaning for repayment. Don't say it. And today we forward things. Amazing. Sometimes I get a message and I have to respond to say, brother, please do not forward me this type of message and please delete it and send a message to all those you sent it to to apologize. Otherwise, this particular message is going to come and haunt your own family, your children and everything around you. It's dangerous. It's about time we stopped it. Not only the tongues wagging, but the phones are wagging. And you know, people say, Sheikh, you talk a lot about the phones. I tell you why I talk about the phones. Because every one of us not only has a phone, but we are so keen on updating the phone that we are waiting on one leg for the next note to come out. Really. We are waiting on one leg for the next iPhone 6 to come out. Really. That's how attracted we are to this technology. That technology can take you to heaven or can push you elsewhere. May Allah grant us goodness. We don't want to go elsewhere. We want to get to that heaven. So use that technology in a beautiful way. Someone sends you a bad message, reply them. Say, brother, not me. Block them. See how they feel. Wallahi, even if it's a close person to you, block them for a few days. Say, you know what? I was so hurt by the fact that you sent such a bad message as backbiting, as slander, as accusation, as rumor about someone else that I really don't want. You know, one day there was a certain scholar of Islam. So, doing good work, trying in his own way. So someone started forwarding a dirty message about him. And that message got to me. And when I got the message, I blocked this individual. And I said, I'm not going to allow them for two, three days to get hold of me. And amazingly, about an hour later, the person realized that the person was blocked. And this person phones me. 
You know what, I'm so sorry, but you know, uh, I got this message from someone, I was just forwarding it, uh, just not because I believe it, but just because, you know, it was something happening and I think people needed to just know and just all excuses. Excuses are excuses. When a person commits a sin, they cannot come and say, you know, I knew it was wrong, but but the term B-U-T does not exist when it comes to why you've committed a sin. No excuse. May Allah forgive us. So I said, look, this man is a scholar of Islam. Allah has used him to help so many people. You want to hit at the top brass who are close to Allah. And Allah says, Man aada li waliyan faqad aadantuhu bil harb. Whoever wants to harm a friend of mine, I have announced war against such a person. You want to declare war against Allah just through WhatsApp. And you think your life is going to remain straight without coming upside down. Believe me, I don't want to be a party of that or to that. Please don't ever you dare send me back a message of that nature. I don't even need to know. If I see you, any one of you, or you see me, or we see anyone else, take the good, leave out that, discount that which you feel might be bad. Discount it, but every one of us has goodness. I promise you, even the little children who are seated here, they have goodness in them. A lot of goodness in them, believe me. But sometimes we only pick on the evil, the bad. We promote it. We get some marination in our juicy speech in order to continue surviving up to the next day just because we've uttered dirty words. Some people, you know, a long time ago it used to be a problem amongst the women. Today I vouch that it's a problem even amongst the men. What happens? We marinate our speech. And we we wake up in the morning from the first signs of daybreak. We already start sending messages and so on about this brother and about him doing this and that sister and this is what happened and all backbiting and slander, juicy, you know, messages right up to the end of the day when we go off to sleep and when we wake up first thing again, we're back on that phone doing the same thing. It's happening. I've seen people, first thing in the morning, WhatsApp. Last thing at night, WhatsApp. Lunchtime, WhatsApp. Supper time, WhatsApp. Driving, WhatsApp. Walking, WhatsApp. Toilet, WhatsApp. Allahu Akbar. You know why we're laughing? Because some of us are guilty. (laughs) And it's dangerous. Can't you leave that phone? Don't you have real life people in front of you? I had one case that I was dealing with where the wife said, please let him marry his phone. I'm looking, I'm saying, what's going on? Allahu Akbar. Let him marry his phone. But the reality is we lack discipline today. Slowly but surely the discipline is beginning to dwindle. We need to discipline ourselves. Set yourself a time. How are you going to use this technology? Today we might be talking about a tongue, not realizing it seeps in to many other things. It really does. Like the eyes. People talk about the eyes, lower your gaze. That means even on your phone. Some people have a profile picture. A profile picture that is so dirty that it's embarrassing for someone to even have them as a contact on the phone. And some men have the profiles of some women who are semi-nude or naked. Amazing. May Allah protect us, really. Think about it. We are Muslims. We, we want to lead a good life, a pure life. We want happiness. Allah has given us the ingredient to happiness. When you have an ingredient to make something In terms of food, for example, you will follow the ingredients and the method to the T because you don't want those biscuits to flop. Why then do we have the ingredients for happiness but we don't want to follow it? Then we are complaining, why are we not happy? Why are we not happy? A lot of us seated here, we might say, I'm not as happy as I should be. I think I'm not happy. Why? We are seated here, we should be happy, delighted. We we are mu'mineen. We should have a beautiful relation with those around us. You know what? The problem with us is we do not close the ring. When I say don't close the ring, ring is, the ring is open. Everything we want for ourselves. Everything we want. That will only happen in paradise. Let's not be greedy. Greedy when it comes to anything and everything. We need to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. Allah is most merciful. The rules and regulations laid down by Him, Wallahi, I promise by Allah, they are only there for us to lead the happiest of lives. If you are to resolve your matters tonight, 
you will start tasting the sweetness of the rules of Allah, the result of following them tonight. By the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my brothers and sisters, let's try and understand. Let's try and understand that Allah has given us a gift. And the gift is the fact that He has asked us very strongly. He has made it in fact sinful for us to use our tongues in the wrong direction. He has made it sinful for us to use our eyes in the wrong direction. Not because He enjoys to punish, no way, He is most forgiving, most merciful. But because He wants us to lead a beautiful life in this world. He wants us to be happy. What's the point of having 50, 60, 70 years in the world? That's such a short space of time. And for 70 whole years we are angry and upset because we are never ever achieving the, whatever we have looked at, we want. We will never be able to get that. So let's rather be people who are happy. Let's be people who use our tongues correctly. Never accuse people falsely. Because believe me, that is one of the most dangerous things to do. If we look at Surah An-Nur, when they accused Aisha radiallahu anha, they paid for it. Do you know what Allah says? They accused Aisha radiallahu anha, na'udhu billah, of having an affair. Astaghfirullah. Do you know what Allah says? لِكُلِّ مْرِئِمْ مِنْهُمْ مَكْتَسَبَ مِنَ الْإِثْمِ وَالَّذِي تَوَلَّا كِبْرَهُ مِنْهُمْ لَهُ عَذَابٌ عَظِيمٌ Every single one of them who spread the news shall receive in return a portion of the sin. They will taste in return a portion of the punishment due to the sin they've engaged in. A portion of it will come to them. That's why I say, when you forward something, you will taste the broth of the forwarded message if it was dirty and if it was hurtful to someone else. Then Allah says, and as for the one who was the main instigator, he will have a huge punishment. You taste it in your life. I have seen it witnessed with my own eyes. I have had people come crying with problems. And just to sit with them and interview them for five minutes, you can get to the root of the problem. It was because one day they started spreading rumor about one of the friends of Allah. Twenty years down the line, they are struggling, suffering, suicidal, completely destroyed life upside down. Why? They did not protect their tongues against those who are worshipping Allah. It's dangerous. It's too bad. We, sometimes people think, no, I'm a rich man. I'm a powerful man. I can do what I want. Allah can take all that away. Matter of time. Matter of time. How many people have been so wealthy, today they are bankrupt. How many people have been on the streets as beggars, today they own huge buildings. How did the tables turn? It is Allah who turns the tables. So when we have a gift of Allah, if you want to safeguard it and protect it, talk good about people. Be kind to everyone. Be, benefit people. مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمُدْ Whoever believes in Allah and the last day should only utter that which is good or remain silent. You have one of two options. As a true believer, as a Muslim, you have one of two options. Either you utter that which is beneficial or you keep quiet. You have no third option. This would mean that if there is any bad word from your mouth, it's not going to come out. From your system, it's not going to be dispersed. It's not going to spread. Not from me. So much so, that even if someone utters a bad word to you about someone else, you would be the first to stop them, to block them, so that at least you know you will not get a share of that punishment. May Allah grant us goodness. I've spoken quite a bit. I want to end by saying something. Brothers and sisters, let us declare today and here. You know there is no point in listening to an Islamic lecture, going home and saying it was a good lecture. It was a powerful lecture. There were so many people, so many motor vehicles. One of the brothers told me, now this is a true story. This is a true story. Uh, one day I met a brother. Okay, let's not say which country he was from. And I met him after I visited that country a few times, he came, MashaAllah, he gave me a big hug. He said, you know, I have become so famous because of you. And I'm thinking now, what's going on here? He says, you know, I was in Mecca. I was in Mecca. 
And I, I heard this lecture. I could see the lecture play of yours. And that was the lecture in my country. And when I stopped there, I heard the number plate of my vehicle in Mecca. <laughs> Mashallah, so much barakah. I told him, brother, have you sold the car? He says, no, 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 no. I'm not selling that car. I heard the number plate. And I looked at him and I started laughing. I had to break out in laughter because to me it was a joke. Believe me. I thought of it now just as well. We mentioned so many number plates today. Imagine where those, the, the number plates are going to go across the globe. Right now there are perhaps hundreds of people listening to us live. Imagine your number plate was red. Allahu Akbar. <laughs> the power of the tongue, huh? MashaAllah. Allahu Akbar. My brothers and sisters, we've had a beautiful time. We've had a good lecture. We've had so many number plates we, which were actually recited. Now, it does not mean that tomorrow you park your car awkward so that we say what your number is, inshallah. Please don't do that. Because if that's the case, maybe we should read out all the numbers of those who park correctly. Uh, the, the truth is, the point I'm raising, let's not go home and just say it was a good talk, so many people, powerful attendance. No. Do something about it. Allah will question you. Let's stop uttering bad words. Let us increase the remembrance of Allah. Beautify the recitation of the Quran. You know, one day I met an old man in India. And he told me that he was a Hindu and he accepted Islam and so on. And he was finding, struggling to read Quran. And I found him sitting in the masjid and I sat with him for a little while. And I told him, do me a favor. You've learned how to read the Quran a little bit. But beautify your voice. And he sat there and believe me, I was crying when I heard what he did. You know, how we, a lot of us, we know how to read the Quran perhaps slowly. Beautify your voice for the sake of Allah. Read in a bit of a tune. You know, this is, this is something that's permissible with the Quran. Try it. You're using your tongue. Your tongue will be moving. Your voice. إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ It's different from saying, إِهْدِنَ الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ very different. The two are both from the Quran. But one, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim The beauty of that. And the other is, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim Both of them are correct. They are both valuable. I would prefer my tongue to beautify the words of my maker so that I can earn his pleasure in a way that I am not embarrassed to be able to really beautify the words of the one whom I am going to return to one day and I want to hear him speak to me directly. Subhanallah. So take your time. We promise Allah that we will beautify our, our tongues with the remembrance of Allah, the Quran, good words. Go, go home and praise the right people. Say good words to them. It will solve most of your problems. Utter the good words. And protect your tongue from saying sweet words to those whom those words are going to pierce their hearts and they are not going to be able to do anything halal about it. Remember what I've said. What's the point of going to someone whom you know already that you've already got your quota of four wives, mashallah. So you're sitting and you're happy. And you go to someone else and you tell them, oh, I love you, you're so beautiful, you're so nice. And oh, wow, nobody's told me that before. Wow, so lovely and so on. Is there any form of halal outcome of those statements? They said, today we went and we were told to come out and utter good words. So my darling, here's the best of words. Oh, you're gorgeous and so on. Believe me. Who are you talking to? If you are uttering those beautiful words to a person whom they will be processed through in a way that they will want to do something about it which will never be halal. In that case we are sinning. Remember that. Like the man, they say the one man, and this is also a story that I've heard very recently. His wife tells him, listen, you know what, you have to tell me, you have to swear that you're going to be honest with me. He says, okay, I'm honest. Describe your love for me. So the man says, he thinks for a moment and he says, you know what, you are like my SIM card, I'm like the phone, you know. Without you, I'm nothing. Now you know that. Wow. So the woman goes back so happy and delighted. Wow, I'm so happy. 
It's the sweetest, most romantic thing I've ever heard. Imagine, without a SIM card, what is a phone? How many of us have phones? No SIM card. Can you have a phone? No SIM card? You have a SIM card. So then he walks out. And as he's walking out, he says, and she's saying, Wow, most romantic word I've ever heard. He says, she doesn't know my phone has a quad SIM. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Allah protect us. What a dirty mind. What a dirty mind. But this is the problem with us today. We want to utter words that just soothe people's minds when we don't really mean them sometimes. Why would he have spoken about a dual sim or a quad sim if he was sincere? He wouldn't even have uttered that. May Allah protect us. So the reason I raise this is, I know some of the brothers are nudging each other to say there is a quad sim in the market, you know that? <laughs> and believe me, there is. If you Google it, you'll see it on Google Images now. You just have to Google the word quad sim on Google image and you'll see the phone. It's available. But that does not make the relationship any better. We need to know that when you say beautiful words, you need to make sure that you are uttering them to the right person. And you need to make sure you are not being hypocritical by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For your spouse, it's an act of worship to utter words to make them smile, to make them feel desired, to make them feel they are the most important people in the world. There will come a time when you too will feel that definitely they are the most important people in this world. Some of us, our lives would turn upside down without our spouses. Really. But we sometimes don't wait or we don't have the time we don't spend the time to tell them that. We don't spend the time to make them feel that, you know what, you are such an important person. So inshallah, this evening we go back, we have a promise we are making. The eyes, the tongue. And the way we operate by the information we give and receive by the will of Allah shall be that which will be within the obedience of Allah. May Allah forgive our shortcomings before this day and may we be from those who can turn a new leaf so that really we can have the happiest lives in this world. And I promise you, your life will change. Give up those bad habits. Pornography, no more. Cut it out. See how your life changes. See how you value the opposite sex. See how you respect the sisters. And see how everyone lives such a beautiful life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us in every single other. And until we meet again, wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallah bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa anta.